This is a story about drift, the drifting of ideas and perceptions. Since the beginning of time, we have changed our environment with our hands, grasping tools, shaping things in our image. Times have changed, the hardware has changed, and the tides have changed. I have changed. By walking the coastlines of South Africa, I have found the story of the drift line, this thin trace left by the ocean, reflecting what it gives, our impact on it. And as we know, if you've looked closely, you've seen little particles appear here and there, all kinds of colors and things. But what is this stuff? This is plastic. And essentially it's carbon and hydrogen with a whole bunch of other additives, chemicals, creating these polymers, these strings of matter to help it perform better, to answer our needs and our desires really. It's been very interesting for me to see how synthetic and organic correlate. And if you're not aware, the plastic breaks down to a molecular level eventually. And the carbon and the hydrogen go back into the system, but the additives then get spread into the ocean. And so that adds to all the other pollution that we give it. But what's interesting is how it behaves in the same way. As if looking in a mirror, I've come to see man's genius, his ambition, his greed, his ignorance and desires truly reflected in this material. As an artist with a bag slung over my shoulder with debris that I'd picked up from this drift line, I wanted to work with it, to investigate it, to see what I could do with it. And it's definitely showed me some very, very interesting perceptions and of what this matter really is. I use polyethylene, the plastic bag, that should be banned, <laughs> <laughs> in a different way. Um, all discarded material that I collect in different layers using heat welding, the, what, what it does best to reshape it and then I give it light to, to give it a new source of meaning. I now found that I had a deeper reason to go and search the rivers, to go and walk the coastline, collecting materials for recreation. And on this journey, I've, I've had to grapple with the duality, grapple with its, its absolute essential nature that we need to maintain this modern lifestyle because I believe that it's in many ways it's seen as a scapegoat for our own ignorance. Um, we very quickly cast aside that it's used for the most amazing things. It it's literally a life support system and feeds us every day. Yet as soon as we see pollution lying around, we say plastic is bad. So it's an exploration into that and trying to find the beauty within the plastic, the beauty within ourselves in many ways. With this work, I found that it was somewhat poetic that the crude oil that is majority used for to, to make plastic uh, once began many millennia ago as floating pieces of plankton and now has gone full circle in the form of litter is now drifting in the oceans once again. And I'd heard about the story of the plastic island, this myth. And so I wanted to see that with my own eyes and to really bring back evidence of it, to bring back the truth. And so I, head out, I headed out very fortunately with a 
research expedition vessel that was taking water samples all the, all the way across the South Atlantic. Life at 10 knots is not for the faint-hearted and not for the faint-stomached. <laughs> <laughs> it was seriously the most the strangest and the most chaotic experience of my life. It was called the Sea Dragon and was run by this group called the Five Gyres. The Five Gyres Institute, they do uh, research around the world creating this baseline study for this plastic phenomenon and has taken them to the most far-flung reaches um, of the ocean and the beaches of the Oceania. And evidence is clear without the study that on, on all these islands, beaches are literally changing color from the amount of debris. So this was our journey pathway from Volfus Bay up to St. Helena and then down across the Atlantic where we hit a little bit of a snag <laughs> 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 did some and did some drifting of our own. <laughs> so much water and sky. The ever-present line of the horizon holds your attention. The movement of the waves and the rudder all created the most indescribable experience. The idea of being tossed off the boat was also a very sobering one. <laughs> um, this is the device that we used. Uh, we deployed this uh, trawling device every 60 nautical miles for an hour at a time and it had a 300 uh, micron net so it caught everything from selps to crustaceans blue bottles and fragments of plastic this was a general kind of sample that we would take and the mix of the organic and the inorganic highlights the issue of just trawling the ocean, uh, the, the problems that could arise from that. So not, it's not as simple as going out with a big net. Some very strange findings as well. Have a closer look at this piece here. This, in my mind, was the plastic island. A very strange turn of events from this harmful material to this life support system once again. And this was not the only one. We came across other fragments. Um, this is a piece about this size. And completely spun around it were these flying fish eggs. This marvelous mucus network. And it became quite obvious that life was attracting other life as well. I pictured earlier I was there out on the bow with a harpoon. This is the idea that I could actually catch a, a monster, a real beast. <laughs> and sure enough, came across this thing. And this was the, le the Leviathan as such. We took these photographs and circling below it were Dorada, three incredible specimens with 30 of their spawn, using it as a kind of shelter, as a little nursery. This is such a strange thing from all the dogma and the stereotypes thrown onto plastic and the harmful effects, which are acknowledged. But this is the other side. Life's indifference holding on, its resilience. And on my return to Cape Town, I was still trying to make sense of all of this, and so I decided to walk Musenberg Beach, a place where I had picked up many pieces before, and came across this, which completely reaffirmed my insight. The, pla the plasticity of nature. So there's a strange ending to this story that we're still writing. Man and ocean, co-creating. Thank you.